Hello and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here we enjoy bringing you tutorials that share knowledge and inspiration. Sometimes it's fun to take a little step back in time for accessory ideas and that's what we've done for this pattern. All the way back to the Middle Ages when bags or pouches were often worn on a belt. Join me and we are going to create a modern day version using our fog pattern. And fog got its name from the literary character Phileas Fogg of Around the World in 80 Days. So we're kind of taking a step back in time. This small bag has a casing as part of the back slip pocket so it slides easily onto a belt. You can shop or travel hands-free. I'm also going to show you how to add strap connectors for a handle or adjustable strap options. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. The pattern and supplies can be purchased on our website or request them at your local quilt shop. We encourage you to shop local, supporting your local independent retailer. I'm sure you're ready to get started. Remember, you can always pause the video. That way we can sew along at your pace. All right, I'm going to go gather my fabrics, get all the pieces cut out, and I'll meet you back here at the work table. Before beginning, review the materials and supplies section on the back of the pattern, which also includes a list of helpful notions. You may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a chalk marker or removable pen. Another option is to download on our site and they're free our pattern piece labels. And I've cut the labels that I need and just wonder clip them to my individual pieces. First, you'll want to center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the coordinating lining pieces. And I've already fused my interfacing to my lining, so let's move on to shaping our pieces. Simply position a large spool of thread in each bottom long edge corner of your pieces A, B, and C. You'll trace the outer edge of the spool from edge to edge and then cut along the marked line to round each of those corners, just like I've done here. Remember to shape the lining pieces A, B, and C as well. On the wrong side of both pieces D, that's your gusset, main piece and your gusset lining piece, measure and mark angled lines in from each corner of the short ends and then measure out along the long edges. You'll mark the angle connecting those markings. You'll also mark center along each long edge. Now cut along the marked angled lines to shape the gusset pieces. First, we're going to top stitch both short ends of piece E, that's the belt band. I'm using white top stitching thread, so forgive my stitching if it's not very even, but I thought white would show up nicely on the black, and that way you'd be able to see where I'm stitching a little bit easier since I'm using all black fabric for this project. Then with right sides up, center the belt band with the long side along the top straight edge of your piece C. That's the main piece slip pocket. Now you're going to position the lining piece C over the stacked pieces so right sides are together. You'll align the top edges sandwiching piece E or the belt band between both layers. Sew the layers together with quarter inch seam allowance leaving an opening at the top edge for turning. After sewing this seam, I'm taking a little extra time to trim the corners and also clip notches at the curves. This is going to help reduce the bulk. Just be careful to not clip or trim into your stitching. Now turn the pocket right side out, shaping the corners and the side edges as best as you can. And I did find that adding basting tape to the opening seam allowances 
helps when I turn them wrong sides together. It's going to hold them in place for the next step of top stitching. And that is going to be along that top seam of the pocket. And it's easiest if you have the right side of the pocket facing up. So you're stitching on the main fabric across that top seam and you're closing that turning opening at the same time. Then while I'm at the machine, I'm just going to fold the belt band over the pocket so right sides are facing up and then top stitch the bottom edge of the belt band through all the layers. Now with right sides up, position the completed pocket centered on your exterior piece A that will become your back. You'll top stitch the sides and bottom edge with eighth inch seam allowance, just as I've done here. And then we can move on to assembling the flap. Install the male halves of each magnetic snap with the centers in from the bottom corners on your lining piece B and do follow your pattern for the required measurements so they're placed correctly. And also check out our YouTube channel for helpful tutorials on installing the magnetic snaps. Next align all the edges of both pieces B. That will be the flap pieces right sides together. We're going to sew the sides and bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance. Clip notches at the curves. This is going to help reduce the bulk. Then you'll turn the flap right side out through the open top edge. Give the flap a press either with your fingers, a pressing tool, or an iron if you're not using heat sensitive fabric. And top stitch following the seam with a quarter inch allowance just like I've done here. I'm going to top stitch with an eighth inch allowance. After top stitching, thread each connector through a D-ring and then fold the ends to the center of the underside so wrong sides are together. Double-sided basting tape is going to help hold those little ends together as well. And then at the work table, we're going to place and center a connector at opposite ends of the exterior piece D, that's your gusset, with right sides up. And again, a little tiny piece of basting tape is going to help at this point too. And be sure to position your D-ring following your pattern because you don't want the hardware in the way for any top stitching as we assemble the bag. Another option is to install mini decorative strap connectors in place of the D-rings and fabric connectors. It's a fast option and it looks great. All right, I have my fabric connectors in place. Now it's time to top stitch close to the hardware and then an eighth inch from the remaining edges. And sometimes I'll reverse stitch just to get myself out of a tight corner so the presser foot can move more easily over the fabrics. Install the female halves of the magnetic snaps up from the bottom edge and in from the side edges following your pattern for those measurements. The snaps will go on your exterior or main fabric piece A. This will be the front. And this is a great spot to think about adding an additional slip pocket or card pocket just above the snaps. I've used the Lucky Penny Wallet card pockets and place those right above the snaps. You can see on this sample right here. And then we're going to move on to assembling our exterior and interior. I've gone ahead and added center marks along the bottom edge of both my front and back of the main exterior pieces A. And then with right sides together, match the exterior piece D, that's your gusset, and the piece A front at the center marks and secure the edges with sewing clips. Sew the sides and bottom with quarter inch seam allowance and I do find it's easier to sew if the gusset is on the top layer. And as I'm sewing I'm going to take tiny little snips only an eighth inch into the gusset at the curved corners. This is going to help the gusset to lay flat on the piece A and then after completing 
the exterior. Leave that wrong side out and you'll repeat the same step to attach the gusset to the back piece A. And we'll move on to repeat these steps to assemble the interior and I'm going to show you my interior already sewn this is a great time to think about adding another set of card pockets or even a slip pocket to the interior or one lining piece and I have a sample here where I did add another set of card pockets but it's certainly optional again use your favorite pattern such as our lucky penny wallet for those card pockets all right, let's get back to the lining. Begin sewing at the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, just as you see here, and then increase to a half inch. This is going to make your lining just slightly smaller and it's going to fit beautifully inside your bag. And remember to leave a five inch opening at one bottom edge. This is going to allow you to turn the whole bag when we're finished assembling. All right, before I turn the lining, trim the seam allowance down to a quarter inch except at that opening in the lining bottom edge. Now turn the lining right side out and we are going to assemble the bag. With right sides together insert the completed flap into the exterior aligning the flap raw edge to the bag back panel at the top edge and the flap will be centered between the two seams along that back edge. And then you'll insert the lining into the exterior, again aligning the top edges, and this time the side seams, keeping the flap smooth and inside the bag. Sometimes I find if I fold the flap just a little bit, because the flap is quite long, Folding it helps take up a little less room and your lining and exterior edges will line up very nicely. And then at the sewing machine, we'll sew along the top edge with a quarter inch seam. This is holding the flap and the lining and exterior all together. And then carefully turn the bag right side out through the opening, smoothing the corners and edges and take your time. This can take just a little bit. And now once all the edges are smoothed and the corners are smoothed, a free arm is great for this step. You can leave the bag with the main or exterior side out, or since my machine doesn't have a free arm feature, I'm just going to turn the bag inside out so the lining is on the outside and then I can sew around following the main or now interior placed fabric. I'm going to top stitch following that top seam with an eighth inch or a quarter inch allowance. I found this a little easier with my heavier fabric to stitch with a quarter inch, but certainly an eighth inch will look beautiful as well. Take a few minutes to sew the turning opening shut. I'm going to stitch right at the machine. And then we can move on to finish the adjustable strap or handle option. Be sure to visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a video tutorial on how to make an adjustable cork fabric strap. It works for the full leather as well. And if you like the handle option, use the piece for the handle and then omit the slider buckle instruction. You're simply going to attach a swivel hook at each end of your handle. I hope you enjoy using your new bag and taking a step back in time. Whether you wear it on a belt, you could even use our Sally Tomato Perfect Belt pattern, or using the optional handle and adjustable strap included in the pattern. Join me in the near future for a tote bag tutorial that Fog is a perfect companion for. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer them. We encourage you to share photos of your completed projects using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Fog Pattern on social media. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll always know when a new video is here. 
Visit our website for more mini patterns. They're designed for all skill levels and are intended to be quick sew projects. Well, thank you for watching and hopefully sewing with me today. Until next time, have a great making day.